Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about element number 36 on the periodic table, Krypton. Krypton has 36 protons, 36 electrons, and contrary to what you would think or expect, it has 48 neutrons. We're going to talk about how Krypton, unlike its counterparts Argon and Neon, reacts with the elements fluorine, creating a compound known as Krypton fluoride, and that's the molecular formula. We'll go more into detail on that. We're going to go over its history and various other fun facts and cool information that is relevant to the element Krypton. We're not going to talk about Superman's home planet, but we are going to talk about everything related to Krypton. So let's begin. I'm elusive to say the least. My name from the Greek cryptos means hidden and it's aptly chosen. I'm almost completely unreactive, colorless, odorless, and tasteless. And I'm only present in the atmosphere in vanishing small amounts. Don't confuse me with the fictional home planet of Superman and the source of his nemesis, Kryptonite. Krypton, one of the noble gases. It's a little bit heavier. As you can see, it's number 36, which means that its neutrons, protons, and electrons are increasing in number and increasing in energy. This is a more energetic atom in general. The credit for the discovery of Krypton goes to Morris Travers and William Ramsey, which was a giant when it came to the discovery of various gases in his time. So according to this article here on Google, Krypton was discovered in 1898 by Sir William Ramsey and his student Morris Travers in the residue left after liquid air had been boiled away. So they were playing with the air and unlike what most people think or see about the air, it's actually something. We don't just breathe in air, we breathe in elements that keep us alive and are vital for our functions in everyday life. Again, William Ramsey was the one who pointed it out that the air that was all around us wasn't just air, it was wasn't just one uniform atom it was actually something it was multiple somethings actually krypton was left in the residue after boiling away water oxygen nitrogen helium and argon from the sample of air krypton is present in the air at about one part per million one part per million is a ratio developed by people that is used to better understand the concentrations of certain types of materials or elements in a certain amount of something else. So one part per million means that per every million molecules of something, only one of those molecules of Krypton exists within everything else. So that means that Krypton is relatively rare in terms of abundance on Earth, but it's technically everywhere just in small quantities. So here is a pie chart that shows how much of each element is in the air because again, we don't just breathe air. We take in elements every time we take in a breath of air. And every time we're breathing, we're breathing in 78% nitrogen, which is unreactive essentially. It's like a noble gas. But since it's so tightly bound to itself, it can essentially be considered a noble-like type gas because it doesn't split apart as its diatomic molecule. It has three bonds and it stays tightly together so it gets to join these other noble gases in terms of unreactivity. The only element that is very reactive in the air around us is oxygen which is what we need to live. Oxygen means acid forming and 20.95% of the air around us is oxygen. There's only 20% of what we need in the air every time we take a breath but I don't recommend breathing in pure oxygen regardless because pure oxygen is horrible for your body because oxygen creates acids and acids burn and if there's too much oxygen in a certain region or concentration it could burn through your lungs and other things it can cause combustion to occur too quickly and your cells to metabolize energy too quickly and that will cause a destabilization of your whole body so it's not recommended to breathe in pure 100% oxygen so here we have the concentrations of gases in the air and we can see that the most abundant gas is is nitrogen. The second most abundant is oxygen. It's the next one in line after oxygen in the air. And almost 1% of the air that we breathe is argon. I previously made a video on hydrogen, neon, and argon. So if you want to check out those videos, the link is in the description below. I'm currently making the video on krypton, which the concentration of is 0.0001%. So in comparison to argon or any other gas in the periodic table, any other noble gas in the periodic table, it's not that abundant 
abundant here on Earth, but the odds are that somewhere else in the universe there's larger amounts of natural abundance of Krypton. A little review and refresher, Xenon is a noble gas, Neon is a noble gas, Hydrogen is not a noble gas. We made a video on that one if you want to check it out. Hydrogen is a very reactive energetic metal that reacts with other things to create various acids and other compounds. Carbon dioxide is the gas that we exhale. Both plants and animals exhale carbon dioxide, contrary to what you would think. You would think that plants don't excrete carbon dioxide, but both plants and animals, living things, excrete carbon dioxide because we're made out of carbon. And when we take in oxygen, the oxygen allows the carbon to be able to fly away in the form of carbon dioxide when we exhale it. And that applies to animals and plants in a process known as cellular respiration. So zooming out, we'll see a diagram that shows the difference between a glass tube that has high voltage applied to it and the difference between one that doesn't. So this glass container here is full of krypton gas. When it's excited by electrons moving at high velocities, the electrons respond by ejecting those permanent electrons that they have in their atoms and rebouncing their energy back. Since noble gases don't react, bond, or interact with other elements, this one happens to bond to one specific element, fluorine. The only reason it does so is because fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table, which simply means that it's the most desperate to gain its electron, meaning that it will even take it from a gas that normally would not even react with anything, krypton, a noble gas. Fluorine is so desperate to get its electrons that it will even react with something that is normally considered to be unreactive. So going back to that fact, krypton is a noble gas and it doesn't react with things in its environment. When electrons are shot at it, it just bounces the electrons back and we see that as light. So that's why when electrons interact with krypton atoms inside the glass, they emit visible light. So how exactly is krypton extracted from the environment? We stated that krypton exists in the air as one part per million. So that means that for every million atoms of something, one part of that will be krypton gas. And because of that fact, we can extract it from the air through a similar process that we talked about in the other noble gas videos called the fractional distillation, similar to the way that we refine gasoline based on the weight and molecular structure. We freeze the noble gases because they have such high energies to begin with that we need to decrease and remove some of that energy in order to get it to a liquid and solid state. And the reason that we distill them is because our goal is to separate them from other elements on the periodic table, such as nitrogen, argon, oxygen, and xenon. When we are able to remove those other elements from the air by freezing and distilling them, we're able to get a pure form of krypton gas that we see filled in this container above. The individual was able to acquire this krypton gas from the air. Either somebody before him had to extract it through fractional distillation or he had to do it himself in order to get it into that container. So, detouring again, having discovered the noble gas argon extracted from the air, William Ramsey and Morris William Travers of University College, London, were convinced this must be one of a new group of elements of the periodic table. They decided others were likely to be hidden in the argon and the process of liquefaction and evaporating, they hoped it might leave behind a heavier component, and it did. It yielded krypton in the afternoon of the 30th of May in 1898, and they were able to isolate about 25 cubic centimeters of the new gas. This they immediately tested in a spectrometer. A spectrometer is part of spectroscopy, which involves identifying elements based on the light emission or absorption spectrum that they emit. So this they immediately tested in a spectrometer and saw this from its atomic spectrum that it was a new element. There are various isotopes of krypton considering the fact that it doesn't have the same amount of neutrons that it has protons that causes it to have various types of isotopes, some of them being radioactive. Eventually we'll get down to the noble gases that are radioactive like radon. So krypton 85 is a radioactive isotope of krypton. Krypton 85 is also used to study the flow of blood in the human body. It is inhaled as a gas and then absorbed by the blood. It travels through the bloodstream and heart along with the blood and is useful for that aspect. So again, going back to krypton and distillation, krypton is one of the many valuable elements produced in the fractional distillation of liquid air. More than three quarters of air is made of nitrogen. The noble gases obtained from the air other than krypton are argon, neon, and xenon. Argon is used in certain types of light bulbs, which is useful to see. Before we invented light bulbs and other light products, 
robotics, anything that could light up a room was very valuable. But now that we have various ways or methods to light up a room, we don't really consider a new process of producing light to be as valuable these days because there's so many ways to produce light in general. So that was Krypton Explained in 11 minutes or less. If you're interested in watching the previous video, it was on Sulfur Explained 38 minutes or less. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and share it with your friends that might need this as a resource. I included the links to the videos mentioned below. Other than that, have a great day.